Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Doka Metal video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at how you can beat stage 5 of the Ultimate Red Zone Dismal Future Edition. Now we're going to also finish the 7 turn challenge in this video, although I am going to show a different team for that as well. Just because I like to show different builds for all the different challenges. So uh, yeah, if you want to, you can copy this team, you should be able to clear out two other challenges. Uh, which is pretty cool so yeah basically uh, to cut a long story short this team build basically earthbred fighters uh, very heavily reliant on the power of world tournament goku and also on the power of the piccolo combination now one super important thing the physical piccolo uh, is going to need to stack so you are going to need to make sure that he can get a couple stacks in because if you transform him too early and he doesn't have stacks the physical phase is going to eat him alive which isn't great um, honestly speaking and yeah is kind of yeah is just not great so you do need to get those stacks for him otherwise his ability to see super attacks is obviously super crucial uh, and of course super duper helpful He's obviously going to be paired up with the Tech Power Awakening Piccolo, who doubles up in a lot of ways. So, great defensively, builds up his defensive stacks, gives us a heal if we fall below 30% health, and his giant form can allow us to do chip damage, and that's a large reason as to why you can finish this event in 7 turns, because his giant form gives you the ability to do some chip damage uh, and save you a couple of rotations. Now, a big factor in regards to this red zone is the first phase against the Int Zamasu. So, Int Zamasu basically has a nullification factor. Um, it's a bit RNG, but from what I can see, uh, normal attacks, so non-supers, will not do damage. Normal crit attacks will not do damage. Uh, super attacks that crit will do damage as long as they're above a threshold of about a million super attacks that are attacks effective against all types will hit and cause damage if they are above four million or three million and of course physical units will pretty much guaranteed hit when they're above a threshold as well i think his natural threshold is three million uh with the type advantage factored in so what that means is basically you either need to have A, really strong physical type units, B, you need to have multiple attack effective against all types units, or C, you need to have units that can crit above a certain threshold. Units that counter are not too great here, um, like physical Vegito, even though he counters is not great here, the counters don't do enough damage to hit above the threshold, and so yeah, that is just something I've noticed. Because of this, this is the reason why we have brought uh, two units. So it's why I've brought Gohan, Ultimate Gohan, who's fantastic as a damage dealer in a lot of situations. But especially in this first phase, he's going to be a very crucial damage dealer for us. So he's very, very important for this first stage. Not that he's mandatory, but you'll need to replace him with either A, a super physical damage dealer, or someone like Strength Gogeta, who you know, can turn into a ridiculous crit machine. Uh, AGL Gogeta also works fine. Uh, Trunks and Mai actually also work fine. It's just going to depend on, you know, basically what you have in your box. Obviously, you know, Time Traveler Trunks also works fine as well. So that's something. Um, then, of course, as well, we also have, you know, the Kid Goku. So Kid Goku is great, obviously he gains damage reduction and crit per orb, but he's also a floating support that creates rainbow orbs and just in general is very very solid. Now he doesn't support a lot of units on our category, uh, unfortunately, but what he does do is he does really help uh, to elevate the team to a certain extent. So he does a very very good job of just elevating the team and doing a really really solid kind of floating job at this point. Also does some pretty good damage himself, uh, but yeah, the Gohan is, the ultimate Gohan is quite crucial, so you need to have a very high volume damage unit to replace it. Um, can be Int Demon King Piccolo as well, also very much a fine unit to use. They need to have 
uh, attacks effective against all types will be physical typing uh, so that you can obviously benefit from it. Now the World Tournament Gokus are obviously super crucial to the run. Um, Double World Tournament Goku is, I don't want to say a hack, but especially in stages like this is very good because he you know, has his own standby skill which turns into revive. And the big thing is here, you are going to fall below the threshold, you are going to get into that zone for your standby skill to activate. When that happens, you are able to trigger both Goku's passives. So it's, it's kind of very crucial because a lot of revive units, you know, they need to revive to activate their passive, right? Whereas with Goku, he just needs someone to revive to activate his full passive. So he, you know, can his friend lead can trigger his own revive skill uh, part of his passive, which is very, very crucial uh, because when his full passive is active, obviously he gets permanent guard, uh, he gets a huge output in terms of defense and offense, and yeah, he just, he just basically becomes unstoppable, he becomes an absolute menace. So, very crucial um, to kind of obviously operate and run along those metrics. So yeah, uh, that is kind of the team build. I don't think we're missing anyone. Oh, we got Krillin. Uh, so we've got World Tournament Krillin, who's great. Um, you know, especially in this physical phase. So Krillin has a super high damage reduction before he supers, and then exchanges that for super high raw defense. Now Krillin gets clapped or smacked or hit by a super attack from Zamasu, then he's yeah he's, he's not going to have a good time. But he's good in pretty much almost every other situation. So Krillin really solid uh, i do enjoy krillin i think he's a great addition to the team not to mention he augments goku a lot so we're actually going to use him on the rotation with goku when we get to this point because that then also allows us uh to push off a lot of our danger units to floating positions which is good now one also super helpful thing is that the physical gohan the ultimate gohan he nullifies um key blast supers so the first phase him and Goku actually just nullify supers all over the place, which is really awesome. The physical phase, it counts as a other, so it is no longer a key blast super, and so you can't nullify. So you do need to be aware of that, like they're not going to be able to nullify anymore, uh, so there is the chance that you can get hit. Now you can see here that we obviously have uh, exactly what we wanted to happen, basically in this scenario, pretty much. Uh, so it's very, very important that you know, everything comes together here. What we're doing here is this turn is going to hopefully bring us to the point whereby we can use the standby skill uh, and take everything from there. You'll notice that I am prioritizing rainbow orbs uh, for Kid Goku due to the fact that that's what gives him his damage reduction. So while we've got the Whis up, that'll be multiplicative, which means he has about 61% damage reduction. He also has around you know, 400, 500k defense upon super. So he should be fine. Um, we will take a fair chunk of damage if he does get super, but still, he should be more than fine. And you can see that the Goku, you know, is still doing good damage because of that attack effective against all types. Now the physical Zamasu does not nullify any damage, which is obviously quite helpful, uh, but he is just you know, tanky and hits very hot, so you do have to be aware of that as well. Outside of that, um, honestly the team runs pretty smoothly, uh, there's nothing too crazy here. It may take you one or two tries, um, especially with physical Piccolo, you need him to, I would say, to be safe if you've got two dupes in them like me you need them to probably super around three or four times uh, before you get to the physical phase now that can happen quite easily if you get a good rng it can also not happen now if piccolo does not get those supers transforming him whatever it doesn't matter uh, it doesn't matter he's going to just take too much damage like way too much damage if he does get those supers you can do what i did you can then wheeze you can let him then super again in the physical phase, as long as you can see where the super attacks are. And then what you can do is you can actually have Piccolo transform afterwards, which gives him 
way more defensive security, which you can see here. Um, we did just skip ahead because we used Piccolo's Giant Form, so we obviously want to skip that. And the reason I used Piccolo's Giant Form was to remove the super attack. So it's not guaranteed to remove the super attack, but because the Giant Form makes the boss cycle through a couple attack rotations, there is the chance that it will remove, to some extent, the super attack of the boss, uh, which obviously puts us in a better position. Uh, Piccolo will take a little bit of damage. Uh, the physical one should take no damage, pretty much, after super. Because he had around 400k, he has 40% uh, damage reduction. He gains 50% attack and defense on super. Uh, so he should be fine uh, in terms of his, like, you know, like, defensive performance. So we shouldn't take any damage there. We can see no super attacks, which means we are now good to go in regards to super attacks, um, which puts us in a very good position. So, yeah, all, all in all, pretty smooth run. And yeah, that's basically it. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And yeah, of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And thank you so much for watching. And let me know what you think about the new stages. I think they're, they're pretty nuts. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys next time. And like I said, we did the 7 turn challenge as well. I'll try and build a different team for that one. Of course. Because uh, why not? But yeah, uh, basically a little bit of a bonus video, I guess. Two challenges in one. And yeah, that's going to be it for me. Bye.